100 metres. One of the highlights of the evening here in Zurich. Absolutely stacked. Seven athletes have gone under 358 this year. They're all here. Not least Faith Kit Yegon. Well, simply the greatest 1500 metre runner on the planet. Will she be pushed by Gunnar Segai, who we saw earlier on in action last night in the 5000? Looked a little bit tired. Laura Muir, another fabulous season for her. Four medals. PB in Lausanne, but beaten by this woman last weekend in Brussels. Kira McGeehan smashing the Irish record. Sonny Rose Sullivan. Heather McLean has had a brilliant season as well. There is Meshesha, Corey McGee. There is quality throughout this field and it'll be one of the highlights, we hope, if it lives up to expectations here over the next three and three quarter laps. Ali Wilson on the far side will be doing pacemaking duties. She also paced in Monaco to great effect a few weeks ago. But Faith Kip Yegon, who hasn't raced in recent oh, weeks, going for a third diamond trophy. Women's 1500. Way first time. Well, the pace that's been requested is uh, 233 kilometres. That's uh, 61 through the first lap. Quite a few message boards I was reading, speculating. It is uh, message board chatter for the most part, but speculating that Fed Kip Yegon may ignore the, the requested pace and try and do something special. Enthused by that world record attempt in Monaco, uh, Steve, a few weeks ago when she came so close, didn't she, to Genzema de Barber's mark. Early stages, though, suggest that's probably not the case. Yep, that's why you don't read message boards. <laughs> Faith Kibiagon, just uh, happy to, I think, run and, you know, try and win this, whichever way she wants. But she just has to be careful. You know, this is a very good field, as you said. The incredible talent in here. Laura Muir is such a good 800-meter runner as well. Kira McGee in the form of her life. Sige did run last night, as you mentioned, in the 5,000 meters, so may have that in her legs. Well, Teji is a, an improving young athlete. So lots for Faith Kim Yegon to, to think about here. So, but she can kick, you know, she can kick with the best of them. And I said about 800 metre pace. I did watch her early in the season. I think she just got pipped by Mary Mora. And that's no shame, is it, over 800 metres? It isn't at all. 64 seconds through the, uh, the first 400 metres, so slightly outside the, uh, the requested pace. And uh, Laura Muir just taking closer order. Laura Muir, who's uh, had a, a brilliant season, as I mentioned. Faith Kipiega, though, who likes to control the race, taking the uh, the shortest route. And this is interesting, isn't it? I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised because what's happening here is Kipiega is, is dictating things because she's Faith Kipiega. But the likes of Laura Muir and Sigai have done this themselves. You know, they, they, they when, when Kipiega is there, are well capable of dictating the race. And sometimes just to mix it up a little bit, you saw Laura think about it there. Well, well the front just moving along a little bit. But I don't think it's super slow. So, you know, they're, they're running off a a reasonable pace it's not incredibly fast it will pick up from now though uh, but now really they're waiting for Kim Yegon to do something the, the moment has passed to kind of shake it up a little bit it'll be down to her well there's an aura about a 211 through 800 meters so it is it is pretty slow so Faith Kim Yegon with that huge gap Ali Wilson is doing what she was asked to to do Kim Yegon effectively leading the way Meshesha we should mention her she's had a fine season as well Hailu one of the talented Ethiopians in there as well Kira McGinn in the middle of that pack must be absolutely delighted coursing through the veins after that fantastic win beating Laura Muir in Brussels just last Friday huge personal best first time under four minutes for her Kim Yegon well th th there is an aura about her isn't it it's as if everybody's looking to her saying well whatever Faith wants Faith will get well, I think this is interesting. She, she's basically tipping the chance of getting beat further in the direction that uh, she wanted to go. Just by leaving it later and later and later, she will still probably be quick enough and strong enough. But it's going to be a big test on the last lap for Faith Kim Diego. Faith Kim Diego then, as the bell goes. Laura Muir in second place. Meshesha is there. McGeehan going wide. Laura Muir will feel her presence on her shoulder. Hilo as well. Segai is starting to uh, struggle here. McLean also at the back. But Kim Diego, where she likes to be. McGeehan down the back straight. Coming onto her shoulder is Hilo. Uh, Hilo into second place. Laura Muir starting to grit her teeth, maintaining that. That line with 200 to go. Kim Yeager will not be dislodged. Laura Muir now in fourth or fifth place. Hailu is in pursuit of Kim Yeager, but watch for the kick. 
Laura Muir has got a lot of work to do. Beltegi just ahead of her. But away she goes. Can Yegon again? Is she on her way to a third diamond trophy? Hailu can't respond. Kieran McGeer comes wide. There is Machesha as well. But Can Yegon once again in a class of her own. It's a 24 karat diamond performance from Faith Kim Yegon. Almost four minutes dead on the money. That doesn't matter. Final lap of 57. And the smile says it all. She's such a popular athlete. And she's done it again. She does not know when she's been. She chooses her races carefully. She came into this final race of the season fresh. And she's come away with the spoils. McGeehan, once again, a brilliant performance from her. Backing up that national record in Brussels last weekend. Hailu and Velteji, Ethiopians three and four. And Laura Muir having to settle for fifth place. But it was once again the Faith Kim Yegon show. 42 flat thereabouts for the last 300 metres. I reckon under 28 seconds for the last 200 metres. It was like she found a bit of downhill track that the others couldn't get access to. Just watch the move if we get to see it here, 200 metres. She doesn't make the big gap there, but that's where the acceleration happens. The others try to accelerate, but cannot do it. This is where they were waiting still. Mascot trying to get in on the act here, but this is early on, 800 metres. And this is the end. we're not going to see the bit that I was talking about. But essentially, it's that burst. Others try to follow, and then you know they can hang on to it a little bit, but she just keeps that hard pace going. I'd love to have had a clock on the last 200, but by my calculation, it was a 27 point something for the last 200 meters. And look at what uh, you know the others are running. I don't know, 28 and a half or something, which isn't bad at all. But good battle for second place. And what a great end to the season for. McGeehan, well, she took about momentum to take into the next season. So Kim Yeager, the athlete who call, who's called his little superstar by uh, her coach Patrick Sang, has done it again. A third diamond trophy, again in second, and Hailu coming through in third place. top end of the stadium uh, where everybody's hoping they're going to be sitting here for a couple of hours watching an enthralling pole vault uh, Renault Levelini 562 nicely done and the day's gone by he's the one that would have been watching and hoping maybe we're going to see a world record tonight who knows but of course these days it's Armand Duplantis who they've come to see I'm told tickets around that top bend were <laughs> definitely the premium this year so, early stages, we'll be following this right through the evening, 5.62, we've seen Lamilini clearing there, apart from Duplantis, we've got others in here, next one we're going to see is Chris Nielsen, who did beat Duplantis just last week, yes he did, the uh, Olympic world silver medalist, he also cleared six metres for the first time earlier this season in uh, South Dakota, and he's safely over as well at uh, 5.62 really lovely fella so chat to him a few times on the circuit this season taking over pole position from a US perspective from Sam Kendricks who's uh, not featured this year and an operation uh, in recent weeks so still recovering so Chris Nielsen up and running here we go that's a little Taster of what's to come, perhaps. He's talked a lot. I was really interested uh, yesterday. Uh, asked him about the kind of your way, way what, what happens when you want to go higher? How, at what point you can you know it's quite a longer fall, the gripping higher, more you know stronger pulls, harder to flex, all of those things to get higher. People are talking about you know he could jump 650. Well, it isn't just about his ability. It's such a technical event. All those other things come into it. And he was starting to explain a little bit about how all those things would uh, have to be. He'd have to work on them one at a time, if you like, for it all to come together. Yeah, so many ingredients involved, and uh, 